Now let's look at iterators and custom generators. So let's start with iterators. What is an iterator? Iterator is an object that contains a countable number of values. An iterator is an object that can be iterated upon, right? Meaning that you can traverse through all the values. Technically, in Python, an iterator is an object which implements the iterator protocol, which consists of a method iter, I-T-E-R, and next, which tells you what is the next value in the iteration. Now, the difference between an iterable and an iterator, right? So list, tuple, dictionary, and sets, all are iterable objects. They are iterable containers, which you can get an iterator from using the iter method or function. All these objects are iter methods, which can be used to get an iterator. Now let's look at it in action. Let's start with a simple example without an iterator. Let's say I have a list. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can train that list stem for i in n. We can print i. Let's clear the screen, run it, and see. See? So there's nothing new here. But what you can see is that uh, we have a list M and I'm iterating through the list M and uh, for every iteration, the value of I changes to the next one, right? Now let's do the same thing in a different way. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an iterator for M. And how do I do that? I use iter method. Now, there is a next method. Next, I trade RAM. And I can do this again and again. And we have done it six times because we have six values. Let's run it and see what is the results. It works. But what if I call next once more? Seventh time, but we have only six items. See, so what happens is that uh, when I call next, when there's no item left in the list, as we iterate through it, it gives me an exception, stop iteration. And of course, next provides us with an additional argument, which is the default value when the stop iteration exception happens. Let's say we call it end of sequence. And let's run it again. And we could have added this default value all along. Or maybe we should do it. We just need to make sure that we are doing it more than six times. I think it has happened. It is more than six times. Let's run it again. See? So what has happened, right? So whenever we have an iterable object, like a list, dictionary, set, and so on, we can create an iterator of that iterable using the iterator method. And we can use that iterator <coughs> object and next function to get next value again and again. This is an example of iterator. Let's do it more efficiently using a loop. So here we can remove this. So we have a list M, we create an iterator. Let's say the first value is I, which I get from next of iterator. Now we do it forever while true, we print i we try i is equal to next 
iterator. Now what happens, right? So in the try block, we just try to do our thing, which is we try to look for the next value. If there is an exception, we handle it. And because there's an exception, there's no value left. So we break the while loop. Let's run this. See, it works successfully. And we are just running it till the end, right? This is nice. Now, let's say I wanted to build a custom iterator. So let's clean this up. Let's say I create a class, call it my numbers. So I define my iter magic method. So let's say self dot a is equals to one. Return self. We have also to define our magic method next. Excel. We have x is equals to self dot a. Self dot a is equals to self dot a plus one. Return x. So this small class is our custom iterator. And of course, it uh, whenever we call iter function, it uses this function dunder writer dunder. Whenever we call the next function, it uses undunder next dunder method. So let's see that in action. So first I create my object, my class is equals to my numbers my iter is equals to iter of my class so we have created our iterator now what we can do is we can print next of my iterator we can do this a few times oops we can do this a few times let's run it and see see it works now our function should also have a way to stop iteration, right? If I would have run or iterated on this object, it would print these numbers or return these numbers forever. We don't want that. So we modify our code in such a way that there's only a limited number of times we can call next. So how do we do that? Uh, let's say we just want to do it 20 times. We have self.a is less than equals to 20. If that happens, we do our things. Else, we raise an exception. Stop iteration. This is all fine. Now, let's try to run it in a loop for x in my iteration my iter print text now we can see let's clear the screen run it and it prints numbers 1 to 20 and this is what we were designing our iterator for so this is how we build our custom iterators so this is all about iterator. Previously, we were looking at a function called reduce, right? Let's look at it again and understand it in depth. So let's do that. Let's clear it all up. It's just a nice use case of what we learned. So let's first import reduce from func to import reduce let's say l is equals to some random numbers four two six one is fine now we want to print s 
and what is this? It's sum which is calculated by using reduce. Reduce the first argument is a lambda function x comma y x plus y then l this is it we should get our oh, results now we get 13 6 4 10 12 and 1 13 that's correct so this is the reduce function right which we imported just for the sake of experiments okay let's let's try one more let's say i wanted to find the max so if x and y are two arguments uh, we return x if x is greater than y if that's not true i will return y and it's not hard to imagine why this should give max right because we are constantly keeping track of the max in first argument and uh, we are always return we, we 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 take the next value and we are always returning the max of the two values and I keep iterating right so this should give us the max which is six in this case six c no problem here now what i wanted to do is go to python documentation let me do that we go to python documentation okay i will just have the link here let's clear this up so the link i pasted in the screen in the comments right if you go to this link you will see a python impl version implementation of the reduce function so i'll just paste it here so let's understand this first and then run it so what is a reduce function reduce function takes p arguments and we have done it before uh, it takes a function which helps us find whatever operations we are interested in there's an iterable like a list there's an initializer which tells you the starting value so we create an iterator out of iterable object if initializer is none we just take the next value of the iterator if it is not none we take the value of the initializer to begin with then we go through each element in the iterator we use the function and we drag the running value and the new element in the iterator and we finally return the value okay. this is my reduce function in python of course uh, it's just to understand now let's say i have a list of items again some random numbers two four six one which was i don't know maybe it was the same now s is equals to reduce i hope i have removed everything yeah so we define reduce ourselves so s is equals to reduce lambda x comma y x plus y and l and let's say the starting value is six let's run this okay we have to print it also we print s so the sum is 19 starting with initial value 6 so 6 plus 4 10 12 13 so sum of l is 13 13 plus 6 is 19 which is correct right so it works and we have understood really how the reduce works we have used lambda functions to define this function we have used iterable iter we have used next and everything comes together nicely so next we move on to generators so now let's look at generator so the main thing about custom generator is the yield keyword 
So let's look at how we can create a generator. Let's say we have a function alphabet sequence with a limit now for i in range 65 to 65 plus limit so 65 is the alphabet a then we'll just use a keyword called yield and then we'll return the character value for i Now let's create a generator. So let's call our generator alphabet gen and let's initialize it. Let's say the limit is five. Let's print. So in generator also next keyword is something which is used. And it's very similar to iterator. So let's print this first and see what we get. We get an A. And let's say we call next five times. We can see it will print us a sequence of alphabets A, B, C, D, E. And if we do it one more, we get an end of sequence thing. See? It prints the first five alphabets, then we get a stop iteration exception. And that's fine. That's by design, right? And we could also have a default value with this end of sequence or something. Let's run it again. See, it says end of sequence. So what is happening here, right? So we defined a function. And there's this new keyword called yield. So yield is very similar to return. In return, you cannot go back. It returns a value and it's end of the function. There's no execution after it. In yield keyword is more like a pause. So what happens is it will return whatever we want to return. And whenever we call next again, it continues from there. So it remembers the state of the function where it returned and it continues. So that's the difference between return and yield. So let's look at one more example. Let's clear this up. Let's say I want to create a generator for even numbers. So we can have zero. Let's clear all this up. So we are creating a generator of even numbers. So simply said, we just run a loop to compute even numbers again and again. And we use the yield keyword to return the state we want to return. While true, so we run this forever, yield number, and then num plus is equals to, so this is just a shortcut of saying num is equal to num plus two. You can also write num plus equals to two. So we have created our generator. Let's say we have our even generator. We initialize our even number generator. So now let's say I wanted to print first five even numbers. For in range five, we print next uh, even gen this is it so what have we done right so basically we define an even number generator so it's just a function but it is called a generator because of this yield keyword so we initialize num to zero we run the loop forever and we keep returning number number plus two number plus four and so on again and again and again it will return 0 2 4 6 8 and so on right and yield is something which returns the value of num but when we call next again it remembers the state of last time when it returned so it continues from there so let's clear the screen run it 
and see it runs for five times because the range five and this is our generator so i hope generator is kind of clear so we can do one more thing for generator so first is let's create a new file here uh, let's call it data dot csv file and let's say i just have line one line two line three that's it three lines let's clean this up so yield is also useful in a way that let's say i have a very very large file like let's say 10 50 gb files right we don't have enough ram to load that 80 gb file right so what we can do is we can open the file and read one line at a time so we can see an example i'll just type it so we write a generator which is like let's say data feeder file name for row in open file name in read mode then we yield the row that's it so we just created a generator which gives us one line at a time. So let's create our data generator, which is our data feeder, then the file name, which is let's say data dot csv sample found equal to zero or row in data gen sample count plus equals one print sample count so what can we see here we created a generator we read the file and we return one line at a time and while doing that, we just count number of lines. Of course, we could operate on the line as well, but we just want to count the lines for now, just to show that uh, we can have a use case of generator. See, we had three lines in the input file, right? We had three lines. This kind of works. So generators is a powerful way to handle very large teams of data. In the next video, we will look at generator pipelines. And there we will really see the powers of generators.